Back in the book segment tonight, we continue our reporting on which American stores are using Christmas in advertising this Christmas season, and which are not. With us now, Fox News anchor John Gibson, the author of the book, The War on Christmas, Why It's Worse Than You Thought. They don't use the word Christmas because it's not politically correct. You go to department stores and they'll say Happy New Year and they'll say other things and it'll be red. They'll have it painted, but they don't say, well, guess what? We're saying Merry Christmas again. Do you realize that Starbucks wanted to take Christ and Christmas off of their brand new cups? That's why they're just plain red. In fact, do you realize that Starbucks isn't allowed to say Merry Christmas to customers? Do you ever feel like Christmas has been hijacked by all the commercialism and those who want to replace Merry Christmas with Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings, whatever that means? It's December, which means it's time for America's new favorite pastime, complaining about the made-up war on Christmas, where a bunch of morons complain about saying the culturally inclusive Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas is somehow a blight on American society. Look, I just live here. Of course, it ignores the cultural dominance of Christmas in this country, being both an important Christian holiday and a general market-driven secular holiday that even the atheists can enjoy. Christmas decorations, Christmas music, mall Santas, and a tidal wave of Christmas films and television specials. There's no war on Christmas. Christmas won ages ago. Simply acknowledging the existence of people who don't celebrate this holiday is the least anyone can do. In comparison to Christmas, the amount of media celebration for Hanukkah, what many would consider the second biggest December holiday, feels like table scraps. In fact, I couldn't find any American-made specials focused on Hanukkah before 1990. I'm not saying they don't exist, but if they do, they're so minor and obscure that even my research bloodhound nose couldn't sniff them out. The oldest I found was the 1990 Hanukkah episode of Shalom Sesame, an American-Israeli Sesame Street co-production meant to introduce Israel and Judaism to an English-speaking audience. Sherry Lewis and Lamb Shop had a special in 1995, and the Rugrats had one in 1996, which you can probably expect a knick-knack special of in the future. Probably the best-known piece of American Hanukkah media is Adam Sandler's 2002 film, Eight Crazy Nights, which is not nearly as good as you remember it being when you were 13. I've asked a few friends, and most would say a Rugrats Hanukkah is the best Hanukkah special ever produced, but it wasn't the first one Nickelodeon produced. No, for that, we go back a year to 1995's The Wienerville Hanukkah Special. Wienerville will, of course, be getting its own episode of Knickknacks later down the line. But to quickly sum up, Wienerville was a 1993 puppet show slash package show slash kind of a game show created and hosted by comedian Mark Wiener, adapted from his stand-up and street performances. The show had a large cast of puppet characters, many played by Wiener himself, including Dottie, the mayor of Wienerville, Sacco, who likes to kick things, and the nearest thing Wiener has to a mascot, Bony, the grumpy skeletal dinosaur. There were a few goofy stories among the characters, but the only thing you need to know going into the special was that everybody is constantly yelling like this, and they never ever stop! Hello? Bony, I need your help! Hey, next time you want to take me skiing, don't! I'm freezing my tail off! I think I'm in love! Ooh. What was that? As Hanukkah was coming our way, so we're dumb and dumb to crash the party! What was it, girl? Uh, uh, Guy fell down while skating and broke his... <laughs> no! Great alien! Look! Hey, happy Hanukkah, everyone! Now get out of here! I considered talking like this to the entire video to replicate the effect of watching the Wienerville Hanukkah special, but I'd probably lose two-thirds of my subscribers. It seriously does not let up, though. But, okay, there is a plot. 
Out in space, there's a couple of alien latka creatures, latkas being oil-cooked potato pancakes traditionally served on Hanukkah, though usually not with Bride of Frankenstein hair. They're being pursued in their dreidel-looking ship by the evil Antidorcus, played by Brian O'Connor, a schemer from Shining Time Station. Antidorcus wants the Latka peoples to obey his laws. And now you shall worship like us! <laughs> <laughs> and now you shall eat liver like us. <laughs> but most importantly, now you shall dance like us. <laughs> oh, dance the kid dance, dance the kid. Hey, that's not the kid dance. The kid dance was like this. Hey, get back here! After this, get after this. The Latkas run out of oil for their ship and crash land on a ski resort on Earth being run by Dottie and the rest of the Wienerville crew. They agree to help them by going to the grocery store and getting them some cooking oil, which they do in the loudest, most annoying way possible. I'm a tiger cycle! I'm a tiger cycle! I'm a tiger! I'm a tiger! Be free my truck station, friend! Go home for the holiday! Antidorcus ends up following the Latkas to Earth and holds the resort hostage, and there's a fight scene where the Wienerville crew use oil and dreidels to beat the alien invaders into submission. The Latka aliens manage to leave, Mark Wiener shows up, they sing a song about how anything you can stick a bunch of candles into can be a menorah, the end. It is utterly obnoxious. What makes this special interesting is that, once you get past all the screaming, what you have is a comedy sci-fi retelling of the story of Hanukkah, with the Latka aliens and Antidorcus meant to symbolize the Jewish people and Antiochus, respectively. Like Antiochus, Antidorcus wants to suppress the Jewish stand-ins and their customs, but is overthrown in a battle using weaponized versions of the symbols of Hanukkah, restoring the Jewish temple, I mean ski lodge. I think in this analogy, that makes bony Judea the Maccabee. And like the menorah that burned for eight days despite only having oil for one, the Latka aliens managed to get home in their ship with only one bottle of oil, even though they needed eight. Oh, and who can forget everyone's favorite part of the Hanukkah story, the utterly pointless Kevin Nash cameo. A king-sized bed, a home entertainment center, and a personal masseuse. Is there anything else? Yeah, Dottie, one more thing. Keep Bony away from my potato pancakes! Okay, that's great. Thank you, bye! While the analogy is clear to us adults, the mincing weirdos and ugly puppets would probably distract the kiddies from the metaphor, so the special takes the time to go over the actual story of Hanukkah twice. First, with a cameo appearance from Mark Summers. Long ago in ancient Israel, a small band of heroic Jews defeated an evil king who tried to force them to live according to his laws. The Jews reclaimed their temple, which that evil king had destroyed, and relit the menorah, but they found only enough oil to last one day. But then a miracle happened, and the oil burnt for eight days. Hey, Summers! <sighs> what, Boney? You ever hear the Wienerville Hanukkah story? No. Well, you're about to. Bring it in, boys! <laughs> And then again, midway through the special, we take a detour to see Ganash Ganakar, a very... Well, if this was something not actually made by Jewish people, I'd feign offense. It seems to me evil space guys are trying to force your people to be just like their people, but you don't want to be because you want your freedom, but you're scared and you don't know what to do. Well, it appears to me that your story is a lot like the story of Hanukkah. Mm, I think I can help. That's David Johansson, by the way. You know, from the New York Dolls, Buster Point Dexter. Kanaker tells them the story of Hanukkah again, this time with the Wienerville characters reenacting, and relates it directly to the blight of the Latka aliens, so hopefully the kids watching will have figured out what the special is going for. It is not, shall we say, the most eloquent retelling of the story of Hanukkah, but I think it serves a different purpose than that. With the sheer mass of Christmas specials, you can usually find something to fit your mood. Something respectful of Christmas, something adventurous, something silly, and yes, something loud and obnoxious. With so few works about Hanukkah, the variety isn't nearly as strong. The Wienerville Hanukkah special is loud and obnoxious because nothing else really was. 
There was a niche to be filled, and Mark Wiener filled it. I can respect that, even if I don't care for the special itself that much. The Wienerville Hanukkah special never received a home video release, but you can find it on YouTube easily enough. If you can only watch one Nickelodeon Hanukkah special this year, well, watch the Rugrats one. But if you think you have enough patience, check this one out. Yeah, spoilers, the, the Wienerville episode of Knickknacks isn't going to be super positive. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon.